Greetings everyone, Tim Anderson here, aka Renfell, and welcome to my Monday Musings episodes, and whatever number this is, I don't even know. This is where I hang out in the early morning and talk with you all about whatever's going on in my life, movies, shows, books, series, other things. Hang out in my ratty ass t-shirts, which have like the arms blown out, and I get yelled at by my wife for wearing, but I don't really care because it's comfy. So, welcome to this morning's edition um first thing right off the bat if, you, if you're not in discord hanging out with us um i shared a movie trailer from an upcoming nicholas cage film called pig which looks absolutely amazing i actually caught wind of it over on twitter anson mount he's one of the few actors that i follow on on social media because i really like his work on hell on wheels and he just seems like a really down-to-earth guy you know he's got a small farm and everything else anyway he shared it and um i watched this trailer and i just sat there and went this looks really good this looks this looks like cage at his peak cageness and it also has some john wick vibes i don't know if it's going to turn into a vengeance film but the premise of the movie is john wisk-esque in the sense that you know he starts off apparently he used to be someone in a, the big city uh, looks like he was a chef or something, and now he lives in the middle of the forest with a truffle hunting pig. And he wakes up one day, and somebody has um, there's an event that happens, and, and it looks like somebody has stolen his truffle pig. And he goes back into town to find out who who done it. And what I don't know is if it's going to have the vengeance um, aspect of it because they don't show that in the trailer. They don't show him going all John Wick. Um, so we'll see. Which also brought to mind i think it was a movie called nobody with bob odenkirk um that came out recently i watched this probably a couple months ago and that was a fun movie i kind of knew where the story was going you know once you, I, probably a third of the way through uh, it wasn't that hard to figure out where the story was going but that was another good vengeance film and uh if they do a second one that'll be interesting um, anyway, um, that was the, the first thing this week was, was watching that. And then uh, there's a new series that came out. Um, I'm blanking on the name of it right now. I'm going to look it up real quick. Netflix. Go log into my Netflix here. Um, yeah, I think it's filmed in Finland. It's wanting me to sign in here. Dun, 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 dun. Which I'm going to be watching this week and probably doing. Oh, no, I don't want to see the trailer for that. I don't want. Stop! <laughs> it's trying to play the trailer. Uh, it's called Catla. Um, and I'll probably do a review of it on, on my channel. It looks interesting. It, I kind of like these weird. Like, if you've ever watched like dark which is a german show a german science fiction show that had to deal with like time travel and stuff this one looks like um it has something to do with a volcano and glaciers and finland i believe it's finland i'm gonna go look it up real quick it might be iceland make sure i'm not speaking out of my patootie here now this is gonna be what i'm watching coming up here soon and it's iceland not finland um, so it's a mixture of sci-fi and Icelandic folklore about somebody who, you know, the people come back from this volcano after having been missing for, I don't know, it, it, it looked interesting. That's on my watch list this week. So I'll be doing a review. I've only ever done the one review about things. Um, and that was the, um, second season of, uh, hang on getting messages here the second season of uh the robot show love death and robots but i didn't do as much of the story updates and i know adric had said hey you know i thought let's get more story stuff so i'm gonna try to do a story review of this show as i watch it i think i'm gonna be watching it this week we'll see um this week is a busy work week so i'm not sure how things are gonna pan out if that's on my agenda but the big thing was pig i wanted to talk about that 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 um thing second thing is um if you haven't tried it out yet i'm i'm not a big i'm not a big survival game fan i am enjoying minecraft but it's i think that's because i'm playing it with my brother 
and my nephew. So there, it's a sense of, you know, it's a family event. So I'm, I'm getting to hang out with my nephew that way, even though I don't live up there. Um, so I, you know, it's, it's something I do for fun. But apart from that, I don't play any other survival games. And we had um, the guest who's on Mondays and MRPGs today, the, the episode that's coming up in a couple of hours, which is on Endgame. Is, uh, his name is Buffalo, and he's from the, uh, the in-development MMORPG, uh, Karth. And they've had a demo going for the past, I think, I want to say it came out on Wednesday of this past week. And um, I tried it out. Um, it's not for me, but I would say that if you like survival-type games and you want to support an indie developer... Um, you should go check it out. I, I say it's not for me because I don't really like survival games and I'm not really into PvP and this game is kind of like both of those things. But I did run around and it has a sort of... Um, I don't want to say it's it's not... I'll just let... You need to go look at it. I mean, it's, it's early access so don't expect, you know, polished graphics or anything like that. But the enemies and the music and... There's a lot of good core features there. Um, obviously, it still needs a lot of work and a lot of polish. But um, for those of you who like to support indie projects, um, I would say go check it out. And if you want to, you know, whitelist it or, uh, or wishlist it, I think is what it's called on Steam. I don't use Steam that much. Um, it's over on Steam right now in a demo. So go check that out. And of course, stick around for his episode uh, with him and Scribbles coming up later today on the Mondays and MMORPG show, where we talk about in-game and MMOs and the evolution of in-game and, and so on and so forth. Um, what else? Um, I linked in uh, Discord as well on the 17th um, the big boss of things over at Wizards of the Coast did an interview with gamesindustry.biz um, and they talked about six in development games within the D&D franchise and they talked about how moving forward games are a huge part of what they're pushing for they said yeah tabletop's great but there's 600 million plus gamers worldwide and more coming every day and we want to tap into that market and i was like that's very good to hear the fact that they have six in development two of which we know about which are well two of which we know the names of which are dark alliance which comes out tomorrow um and then baldur's gate 3 which is still in early access and probably a year out at the very least um, but there are four other ones and what's interesting is in his in his article he quotes the possibilities and I don't want to read too much into this but one of the things that I found very interesting when he was talking about you could find yourself doing this or doing this or doing this and one of the things he said you could find yourself doing was you know getting a horde of good guys together to battle the dragons of Kryn and I was like ooh they mentioned Dragonlance you know and it's like there's there's a rumor going around that the upcoming open world game that's being built is going to be in the realm of Dragonlance in the world of Kryn, Kern, I always forget how to pronounce that um, off the top of my head, um, because there's already so many other Forgotten Realms world uh, games. I mean, we have Neverwinter, the MMORPG, we have Baldur's Gate 3 that's set in Forgotten Realms, um, Dark Alliance is set in Forgotten Realms, but they have other worlds that they don't, that they haven't done anything with in a very long time. So the rumor is that theoretically, um, the possibility is that that triple a open world game that's being developed right now could be a dragonlance world which would be amazing but even 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 if it's not the fact that they have four other games in development um one of which you know is an open world game it says a lot for the future of the franchise and i think as a, as a fan of dungeons and dragons you know i think it's one of many good you know the thing with Dungeons and Dragons is it's not just a world anymore. It's a system. It used to be Dungeons and Dragons was, you know, identified with one world back in first edition and second edition. And then they started creating other worlds using that rule set. Um, and since then, Dungeons and Dragons is no longer about a realm in particular. It's just, it's a rule set that has different worlds within it. Um, and I think that there are a lot of really good home-brewed worlds um, that are being built now, even if they're not using 5e. Um, but I'm glad to see more precipitation because, you know, I have fond memories of the Dragonlance novels growing up, and I would love to see something come out of that. Um, and I'm, I know that the, you know, we have an upcoming new series from Weiss and Hickman. 
it's going to be interesting to see where everything goes with um, with their projects moving forward. But I thought that was something interesting to, to look at and mention in Discord and talk about a little bit today. What else are we looking at? <sighs> oh, I'm getting my... I think I'm getting my first COVID shot on Tuesday, I think. Um, it, my wife's the one who's paying attention to all the websites and everything else. And we were able to register on, on the 28th of last month. Um, and all the government websites here in Mexico City published a bunch of stuff stating times and dates. Um, and the 40-year-old bracket, 40 to 50-year-old bracket, who live in our neighborhood um, with my last name is Anderson. So A, B's and C's can start going in on the 22nd, which is Tuesday. They haven't sent me a text message yet. So, but the websites are all saying, even if they didn't send you a text message, just go because that's your name bracket and everything else. And you should just show up with your document showing that you registered and you should be able to get your shot. So theoretically, um, I also still don't know what shot I'm, getting it's a little different here in mexico city than it is up in the u.s um chris thinks we're getting the astrazeneca which is the oxford one um which i guess is huge it's not in the u.s but it's huge in canada germany england so on and so forth um i don't know yet so theoretically that's going to happen on tuesday so i may be under the weather for a couple of days i don't know i have no idea how i'm going to react to the shot neither does chris I think she's getting her shot the same day, but we'll see. Um, I don't know, because it depends on if they base it off her paternal last name or her maternal last name. Because in Mexico, you have four names. So there's your apellido is, your last name is depending on whether they look at it from your paternal side or your maternal side. So we'll see. In any case, Tuesday, I think, Tuesday morning, I'm getting my shot. So we'll see how I feel that day. Tuesday is also the day Dark Alliance comes out. And I'm hoping that I don't feel too much under the weather because I've been looking forward to that game. But even if I do feel under the weather, that might be what I do when I feel under the weather is just lay on the couch and and, and play Dark Alliance um, for a few days until I feel better. But we're also kicking off a huge uh, marketing campaign on Tuesday and Wednesday for my day job because we have a speaker series kicking off on July 21st. So I can't be under the weather for too long because i gotta got work to do for marketing stuff. Um... I think it's going to be a short episode this week. I'm looking at it going 12 minutes in, and I'm, I'm already into the Project Dram and stuff because I didn't have a lot going on this past week other than just prepping for day job stuff next week. Project Dram and stuff, um, last week we started up a newsletter, obviously. Um, if you have not joined the newsletter, um, check the most recent Project Dram and video here on YouTube. Excuse me, which was the stand-up video from this past Friday. There's a link there to the newsletter. You can also find a link to the newsletter in the Discord. It's one of the posts that had everyone tagged. If you're interested in what we're doing with Project Dramond and you want to get a, uh, access to the free demo for the PC game that's going to be coming out soon, and you want first round selection for the slots in the playtesting groups, for the tabletop game you're going to want to sign up to the newsletter because that's where we're doing all of that patreon is where everybody can go to get behind the scenes access all the screenshots and videos and everything else um, as an example on sunday i shared out a speed run video of joey doing some gray box replacement but the full video and all of the behind the scenes screenshots are a patreon post um, and that's a great way for people to support what we do is by picking up a subscription at Patreon. You can go from $3 a month all the way up. But the newsletter is a little different because the newsletter is obviously for free. And that's going to be where we do something slightly different because that's going to be um, when we do the push for marketing and everything else. It's all goes through the newsletter. So um, if you want to get access to the free demo, it's not ready yet, but it will be ready soon. You're going to want to send it to that newsletter because that's the first blast the first round access goes to the people in the newsletter. So that's where you're going to want to go if you want to get your hands on the demo of the game we're building and you want to get involved with the tabletop playtesting. Above and beyond that, um, Chris has been a little slow this week, just under the weather with some stuff. But uh, she's continuing to work on concept art. Um, I wrapped up the city map for Parthana, as, along with getting the newsletter going. And Joey is wrapping up... I shouldn't say wrapping up. He wrapped up 
the forge building and now he's working on the exteriors of the other buildings and then he'll be moving over to interiors so moving straight ahead with all that stuff so um still got a couple weeks left here in june i don't think we're gonna have anything ready for first of july but we're hoping that by the end of july we'll have some we'll have everything ready um that was always a soft deadline anyway not a hard deadline it just depends on because we both have day jobs. Uh, his day job is more weather. His, his day job is weather dependent. Mine is not. So it just for him, it depends on whether the weather's good or bad. It depends on how much work he can get done. Plus, he had to add like their spring um, sale barn run for the cows and spring branding and vacuum at vaccinations. The ranch stuff keeps you busy sometimes when there's good weather outside. <laughs> Um, newsletter, I'm working on more module maps coming up this week, next couple of weeks. I'm just going to be trying to get as many module maps as I can done. Cause I got to do the districts of Parthana now for the campaign module. Then all I got to do is add art to the campaign module and, um, get that prepped and ready. And then we'll have a PDF that folks can get their hands on if they're going to be joining the play testing. And like I said, um, probably do the call for playtesters for that first week of july um we'll see where we're at probably two weeks out from that probably um not sure i thought i was gonna do it in june i could do it for june but i gotta get with my brother too first we gotta figure out what day he can do it because he's got to be involved in the playtesting it's probably gonna be on a weekend night it'll probably be like a saturday or sunday night Sunday nights are already taken up by our Minecraft sessions, so we can't do it on Sunday nights, actually. Um, so I just got to get with him and figure out what night's going to be a good night to do it. In any case, that's all we've got this week. Um, this is a quickie episode. Um, we've got two more episodes of Mondays in MMORPG pre-recorded and coming out. We've got the episode with Karth coming out later today, and then we've got Ash and Phoenix uh, on again next Monday talking about the evolution of standards and games. I have not recorded any more episodes beyond that. That'll be 12 episodes in total for season one, for season three, excuse me. And once we get to that point, um, looking at, I'm going to sneeze here one second. Oh yeah, being home and sneezing all over the floor. That's good. Um, we've got a few more episodes in the episode list for season one. So we'll see when we record those. I don't know if we'll take a little bit of a break or not. Um, I, I've been debating about doing a live format or just doing them. I don't know. The thing with live is that I don't know that anyone... Most of the people that we have viewing the show tune in after the fact, so I don't know if there's too much of a benefit to doing it live. I've had a couple of people ask if we could do it live, but the issue is just getting everybody together on a Monday night is just problematic, and doing it Monday daytime is also problematic because everyone has day jobs. So, yeah, I don't know about doing it live, but we'll see. In the meantime, we got two more episodes coming out, and then we got to try to schedule some more. So we've got, I think we got 18 episodes in total planned for season three so we've still got a few episodes to get through <laughs> excuse me so we should get all the way to the end of july at the very least and probably into august and then we'll see if we keep going beyond season three or if we just make this a weekly show that just keeps on going i don't know i kind of like the way simmer does it with um looking for more where it's week it's almost every week sometimes they miss an episode because of life you know but for the most part it's every week um, but we'll see. I've also kind of, unless we're just doing news topics, um, there's not always a lot of themes to talk about with MMORPGs that we haven't already covered before in the past. And the other thing is, you know, we could, we could get more gamers on or more streamers on as opposed to most of the people we've had on have been developers for the most part this season. Uh, and then a few people who are just gamers like Ashen, who also runs his own podcast, um, Crash While Loading, which come those air on Sunday, if you haven't listened to those. Otherwise, you can tune in. He puts them out on YouTube and also on Podbean, I think, uh, if you want to just listen to the podcast version. But he usually goes at like 5 or 6 p.m. Central Time on Sunday over on Twitch. 
So, I mean, those are like my staple shows right now is like Crash While Loading and then the Looking for More podcast, which I'm a part of. And, of course, my own show. Um, and then outside of that, I've been doing a lot of podcast listening in the travel sphere for my day job because we're doing a lot of R&D for people to have on our show. So we're inviting other podcast hosts and stuff. So in any case, um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following along. Thanks for your subscriptions, likes, comments, shares, all that good stuff. Don't forget, um, head over to Patreon. Pick up a subscription if you'd like. Or if you want to get sneak peek previews of what we're working on with Project Jam, and don't forget to check out the TikTok videos uh, like we did uh, yesterday with the um, speed run of things, so on and so forth. We'll see everybody in the next episode. Don't forget, Mondays and MRPGs later today. See ya.